All right, Stacy, we are live. Um, hello, everyone. This is going to be a different type of live and interview today. So let's start with explaining uh, what we're doing tonight and who we're with and why. For those that are here for our uh, weekly hidden hour, I want you guys to all know, our gems know that tomorrow night will be our official hidden hour with with John. So for those that were waiting uh, for that tonight, I hope that you'll stick around and, and be with me tonight. It's just going to be me. We are going to do a hidden hour tomorrow. We're going to dig deeper in quite a few things, possibly this interview that we do today, or also Gypsy Rose. John is looking at a lot of different things. Is that me or you? That's you, right? Me? I hear a buzz. Um, so plan on hit okay plan on hit an hour tomorrow and tonight we're going to spend some time with stacy wondra um and we're going to explain who stacy wondra is many of you know it this is, has to do with the missing michael vaughn case we're going to get into that in just a second uh well no i'll just share now M little five-year-old michael vaughn his nickname is monkey went missing from fruitland idaho um, July 27th, 2021. He has not been seen since. Uh, we have been covering this case. I've even been to Fruitland, Idaho. And uh, I went I went in 2022, at the end of 2022, to actually uh, see the house where Stacy Wondra, where you were living with your then wife, uh, Sarah Wondra. You were both brought up in press conferences as persons of interest in this case. Uh, before we go any further, and again, for those that don't know about this case, stick around. I'm going to give you guys, uh, and Stacy knows this, I'm going to give you guys a background of this case so you can be caught up. Because it's really important that we keep talking about this case. Because what happened is, uh, honestly, Stacy, when there was a press conference and you were named as a person of interest along with your uh why she's still your wife but you filed for divorce your wife mm -hmm. sarah wondra and other people that you were living with at this at the time um the media kind of dropped the case like i think we all thought that there was going to be an arrest that was made and uh we thought that monkeys honestly remains <coughs> in your in your yard honestly because the police were looking in your yard for monkeys remains and uh, that didn't happen. Uh, you were never charged. Sarah was never charged. Monkey was never found. Mm -hmm. And I think it's really important we start talking about this case because um, John and I care a lot about this case and we care a lot mm -hmm. about Monkey. As much as I said, I've even gone to Fruitland, Idaho. So mm -hmm. so that's the case that we're covering. And and then for those that don't know, I'm, we're going to get you caught up with exactly who Stacy is, port, kind of where this case went kind of silent from the media. We're going to get to that point. And then we're going to start talking to Stacy. Now for our Patreon members, as well as our YouTube channel members, there was a really special interview yesterday, a very sensitive special interview. So it is private still not private, but we made it small. Stacy requested it be small yesterday when, when my husband was interviewing you, right, Stacy? And mm -hmm. John interviewed you yesterday for two hours. Um, mm -hmm. I was on my earphones listening in. It was such kind of a sensitive live that we turned the chat off. We made it again Patreon only mm -hmm. or YouTube member only. So we had very few people. That's where it is. So if, for anyone that's very that's curious about that live. I do have the link to our Patreon in the description of this uh, video. I, I, in my opinion, um, this, it was, it's really fascinating to watch. That's all I'll say. Uh, my interview is going to be <laughs> different tonight. Um, I, I have, it's, it's going to be similar in that we're going to listen to Stacy, but you know, John and I have a different skill set. We have different professions. Um, John had his own, um, style, I guess you could say, I'll leave it at that. Uh, so that is for Patreon and, um, our channel members. So, all right. 
Um, and then Stacy, something else, I actually didn't bring this up. We have some wonderful moderators on our channel that have been following this case intensely. I'm going to interview you for a while. I can update our audience and then we might have some moderators jump on if they have any additional questions for you, if that's okay yeah, with you. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Again, thank you for being here okay. with hidden true crime. We really, really appreciate it. Uh, it looks like we might even have some moderators in the background already, and that's it's wonderful. So I'm going to start by sharing with everyone um, just a really quick short. Uh, well, no, first I'm going to start with the background. I'm going to show you, Stacy, a presser, a uh, press conference that Fruitland, Idaho police did about mm -hmm. you, um, about your yard, about you. You you were not around for this because you were in jail. On a separate Correct. charge, you were being held uh, on a weapons charge. Um, so, so this is from 2022, November, November of 2022. 2022. Mm -hmm. November of 2022, when police announced mm -hmm. they were looking at you and Sarah and a couple other people, mm -hmm. as well as a News Nation report that ran that I was a part of. So, so Stacy, I, I was actually a spokesperson often for the family. Oh, cool. uh, when it came to the national media. Yeah. And uh, my background is in TV reporting and journalism. So you're going to see me a news nation report, and we're going to be reminded of this presser because I just feel like it's really important to get this. Since we do have a chat tonight, I think it's really important that we get everyone on the same table and then listen to you and listen to mm -hmm. your side of everything. Does that work for you? Mm -hmm. All right, let's do this. missing series this morning the family of a little boy in idaho are hoping they can finally get some answers as to what happened to him oh did that just end it mm -hmm. sorry everyone just a second okay i see what i did i apologize everyone we're gonna start i had that and i i x out of the screen i apologize mm -hmm. everyone um, so what I'm doing is I'm going to our playlist for monkey Vaughn. We have a full monkey Vaughn playlist. I actually interview monkey's mother, um, Michael Vaughn's mother. Again, his nickname is monkey five-year-old Michael Vaughn. And I have this presser. So now I'm going to pull this up once more. All right. Okay. Thanks everyone for your patience. This is again, a unique live that we're doing tonight. So thank you everyone. All right. Here is a news nation report that I was part of. And so for those that don't know monkey story, this is also a good thing to get up to date with missing series this morning the family of a little boy in idaho are hoping they can finally get some answers as to what happened to him michael vaughn disappeared last year when he was just five years old today police are going to hold a press conference a few hours from now and they are expected to reveal what they found while excavating a neighbor's backyard this family tragic as it may be are hoping for answers for closure and that this isn't another false lead. Here's a look at Michael's story. For more than a week earlier this month, heavy equipment worked in the backyard of a neighborhood home, <laughs> just blocks from where five-year-old Michael Vaughn disappeared. Police saying they received credible information they would find his remains there. Lauren Mathias speaking for Michael's mother, Brandy. Even as she was telling me that that was the word law enforcement used, the word remains, she could hardly say it herself. When she said it to me, she started crying. And she said, I can't say that word yet. She says the family still doesn't know what, if anything was found, only that an occupant of the house, 35-year-old Sarah Wondra, has been charged with failing to report a death. 
<laughs> the smiling little boy known as Monkey disappeared in July of 2021. He was at home with his dad and baby sister while mom was at work. Dad says he went to change a diaper and when he came back, Michael was gone. Searched the house, searched the backyard, went out in the front yard, jumped in my van, called Brandy. Oh! Last winter, Michael's mom, Brandy, invited our News Nation team to their Idaho home, showing us where the canine search teams had tracked Michael's path as he apparently looked for neighborhood kids to play with. He went to a neighbor's house. He went to another neighbor's house and another neighbor's house. But the trail went cold at the end of the street. Police labeling the disappearance an abduction, many assuming that meant an outsider. We have wondered where he could be in the world. And so to find out that they're digging in a home in their neighborhood, a four minute walk away is very, very overwhelming. A year and a half of searching and interviewing Police saying they wouldn't give up. We haven't stopped. Every day we have unfinished business. And I'll tell you that every day is an anniversary of the disappearance from Michael Vaughn. Now vigils. And the wait to hear if police finally have answers to what happened to Michael. Beautiful, you guys. Beautiful. And again, we are awaiting a press conference from police in Fruitland later today. In the meantime, Sarah Wundra was arraigned last week on a charge of failure to report a death. She was declared unfit to stand trial. She will go before a judge again in 90 days. Her husband, his name is Stacy Wundra, is also currently behind bars on unrelated weapons charges. Neither has been charged with Michael Vaughn's disappearance, but again, it was their home authorities were at excavating in the backyard looking for any evidence. Thank you for watching. Go to news. Um, I cut off their commercial at the end there, but I agree. Go to News Nation on YouTube to follow News Nation. They do a great job, and I've been grateful they've been covering uh, Monkey's story. Uh, so, so with that being said, we had the presser today. Again, I'm going to play part of that presser. I captured some of it, the majority of it, not all of it, but we'll we'll play that for you in just a second here. And uh, I think the main takeaways on the presser is that not only have police said okay, they, they haven't found monkeys remains, they excavated the Wonders entire yard, Sarah Wonders behind bars, Stacy Wonders behind bars, but you know, Sarah Wonders behind bars with failure to report a death. That would be in relation to monkey, uh, but not in his abduction or death. And then Stacy Wondra is behind bars on a completely separate charge, a weapons charge. Um, I have heard word from a, a friend of mine. She's a good friend of mine, Karen Lair. She's a reporter with uh, Channel 6 in Boise that charges for Stacy. Additional charges might be coming down soon. In fact, they could be coming down. I'll check my phone here um, any moment. But police also discuss two new people when it comes to Monkey Vaughn's disappearance. So this isn't just two people. This is four people now. A Brandon Shirtliff, who is from Ohio. He is not behind bars. He's somewhere. And then there is a Adrian Lucine, uh, also not behind bars. So those are two additional people that police mentioned. I'll go ahead and play the parts of the presser I have. This is from our TikTok channel, Hidden True Crime. I put the closed captions up, but I was so quick to put it up. I did not correct the spellings of things in the caption. So please know that was computer generated. It's not misspellings on my part. Bear with me here. Sarah Wandra is currently being held at the Payette County Jail for failing to report a death to law enforcement. This is Sarah's husband, Stacy Wangra, 30 years old, a male. Stacy was also living at 1102 Red Wing Street in Fruitland and was living there at the time of Michael's disappearance. We believe that Stacy has firsthand knowledge and is involved at the time of Michael's disappearance. We believe that Stacy has firsthand knowledge and is involved in the abduction of Michael Vaughn. Stacy is currently being held in the Washington County Jail on unrelated charges. Brandon was living with Sarah and Stacy Wandra at 1102 Red Wing Street at the time of Michael's disappearance. And we believe Brandon has firsthand knowledge of Michael's abduction. Brandon is currently to believe, believed to be in North Dakota. 
Adrian Lucien, 32 year, 32 year old male out of Toledo, Ohio. Adrian was staying with Sarah and Stacy Wander at 1102 Red Wing Street at the time of Michael's disappearance. And we believe that Adrian has firsthand knowledge of Michael's abduction. Adrian is currently believed to be in Toledo, uh, but floats between Ohio and California. I strongly encourage Shirtliff and Lucien to contact the Fruitland Police Department detectives as the window of time for talking and cooperation is coming to a close. This remains an active and ongoing investigation with conversations taking place with the Payette County Prosecutor's Office about Michael's case and those individuals involved. We also believe that there are others associated with the Wanderers, Shirtlift, and Lucene, who may have knowledge of Michael's abduction, and I would strongly encourage them to come forward and speak, speak with my detectives. When we finally reach the conclusion of this investigation, and I can assure you that we will, all of those who have knowledge of Michael's disappearance and have failed to report or hindered our investigation will be pursued. There's a moment in time to do the right thing and bring your information forward and cooperate. And that moment in time is now. To date, the Fruitland Police Department has received over 1,500 tips and leads, and we received many new leads since this phase of the investigation has began. We continue to ask our communi community for support and patience as we continue to aggressively work this case. We also ask that the Vaughn's fa Vaughn family's privacy continue to be respected and we'll continue to post updates as information can be shared. Tips can be sent to findmichael at fruitland.org or to crimestoppers at 343cops.com or the Fruitland Police Department at 208-452-3110. Tipsters can remain anonymous. So, uh, before I open it up for questions, uh, I just want to make it clear that this is a very active and ongoing investigation. Um, it's, it's super important uh, that we maintain the integrity of this investigation. So I'd ask you that you'd please tailor your questions accordingly. With that, I'll stand for a few questions. Alex? Um, so if Michael's remains in the lost town, does Sarah have to be released or do you think I am in Fruitland, Idaho, the neighborhood where Michael or Monkey Vaughn, five-year-old Michael went missing in 2021, July. We're still looking for him. And here is the house that police were recently digging for days. If you zoom in there, that, that gate there, that's where we've seen photos of a bulldozer just beyond that gate. Now we just were at the Vaughn family home. It is so close. It truly is like a two minute walk from their home, but the family does not know who Stacy and Sarah Wondra uh, are, and they were the ones living here at this home at the time Monkey disappeared. Okay, did that have sound with it? Someone said, yeah. okay, everybody had audio? Okay, mm -hmm. I think that that summed up who you are, Stacey. Um, somebody did ask, they said, I'm confused, have you been cleared by police? You haven't been cleared by police, no. but you also have not been charged. Correct. But, but you have not been. So so let's make both. <laughs> let's be very clear who Stacy Wondra is. We're just here to be really honest. Um, mm -hmm. Stacy has not been cleared by police. Uh, um, I don't know. This is me asking you a genuine question. I don't know if you are considered a person of interest or a suspect in this case. Um, um, from what I know, I mean, I, I honestly don't know. I've been told person of interest, and then I've been told I'm not. I've been told a suspect. So there's no, I mean, I'll never find out the the, the actual, I guess, facts okay. behind it. Other than, I mean, you know, yeah, yeah. But I mean, and that's pretty serious. So so people are saying, what is this interview? This is what this is. Mm -hmm. um, this is a this is a case that John and I care a lot about, and this is who Stacy is. But Stacy, I want to make really clear, has also not been charged mm -hmm. with monkeys uh, or excuse me, Michael. I know some people um, I'm close, you know, just, so you know, I I'm used, I will try to call him Michael. I know that 
his nickname. Some people don't think I should use it. I just want you guys to know that a lot of the missing persons folders did say his nickname. So I apologize for those that mm -hmm. think I should be saying Michael, five-year-old Michael. Um, you have not been charged in Michael's right. disappearance. Michael has not been found. And really, this is kind of where the case sort of left. It was about December 2022 where the case kind of fizzled from the media, but nothing's happened. And then you were being held in jail. What char what were you charged with in jail? Felon in possession of a firearm. Okay. And you were recently out um, on parole? Are you on parole or? Probation. Probation. Okay. And so here we are. And... Um, I think that if anyone knows something and that you can share with us, it, it's you. We care about this case. Um, thank you, Amy. Thank you. Uh, Amy says, use his nickname. We want my monkey home. Okay. Um, a couple other things. This is the Idaho Statesman. Um, the Idaho Statesman, this is November 14th, 2022 where it says police have arrested a woman suspected to be involved in the disappearance of a Fruitland boy and charged her with failure to report a death. Sarah Wondra, 35 of Fruitland, was arrested Friday after police served a search warrant at the Red Wing Street residence she shared with her husband, Stacy Wondra, according to a probable cause affidavit. The residence was the site of a weekend police search and excavation in connection with the disappearance of Michael Vaughn. Michael went missing July 27th, 2021, um, from his front yard, half a mile from the Wonder residence. He was five years old. Police have not said what evidence they're looking for, but they did bring cadaver dogs to search the yard. By Monday afternoon, officials had not said whether they found evidence. Sarah was arraigned Monday afternoon. Sarah's now been released, and those charges, Sarah's now been released. Um, no. Right? No? No. She's, 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 the charges were dropped, but she's in prison. Okay, she's in prison, but those charges for failure to report are dropped. Correct. Okay. Okay. Um, and then um, this is important. Fruitland police obtained a search warrant for your house. According to court documents, police forced entry into the Wondra's home around 9.30 p.m. Friday, where they found Sarah Wondra in the living room. She was detained and read a copy of the search warrant. When I got to the portion that read murder, she said, did you just say murder multiple times? A Fruitland police officer wrote in the affidavit. She also said, I have never murdered anyone. Officials said Sarah Wondra maintained that she definitely did not kill that boy, end quote, and said, in quotes, the most high God already told me who did it, end quote. She reportedly told police, in quote, oh, wow, wow, the most high God just told me that Stacy was the one who who killed him and buried him in the yard of, end quote, a neighbor's, the neighbor's house. When asked later to show police where the boy was buried, according to the affidavit, she told police of a spot near the entry of her residence and said Stacy had buried him in the backyard by the shed, end quote. I'm sorry, everyone, uh, for reading this. Um, this is heavy. Police said by that point they began digging a portion of the Wonders Yard based on the information and this is in quotes, Stacy. This is important. I want to ask you about this mm -hmm. from Stacy. So police said by that point, they had begun hand digging a portion of the wondrous yard based on information and in quotes received from Stacy and quote, who had not been arrested or charged by Monday afternoon. And you still to this day, I will add not been charged. It mm -hmm. wasn't clear when or why police had spoken to Stacy Wondra. Stacy Wondra was arrested and told police Sarah, excuse me, Sarah Wondra was arrested and told police in quotes, God just told me that Stacy was the one who did it end quote. Um, adding that she knew where the body was because in quotes, that is what Stacy just told me end quote. She then corrected herself and said, well, that's what God told her. She allegedly reiter reiterated to police that she had nothing to do with Michael's disappearance. And then she said her husband buried Michael in the backyard by the shed, but that, but wasn't the one who actually but wasn't the one who actually harmed the boy. She said instead that that man was identified only as Adrian and that he had been the one to do it. And he was scared to tell anyone. That's a lot. That's a lot. So we're going to go over your timeline 
Mm-hmm. And and my husband brought this up with you, and and I think I want to start here. And I'm sorry, like we're we're kind of delving in. I feel like you know us now. Like we just want to listen and hear. But what were you telling police? Police said that they were digging in your yard because you told them where to dig mm-hmm. for this little boy. Is that right? H- help us understand that. Help us understand because you maintain your innocence. Let me let me explain this. Mm-hmm. Stacy maintains his innocence, right? Is that correct? <laughs> <coughs> so, <coughs> so tell me if that's true. You told police where to dig. Help me understand that. So, at the time of being incarcerated um, and being interrogated, this is in November. So, as previously mentioned on the video or the the YouTube video I did yesterday with you guys. Um, I was diagnosed with with different mental illnesses as a young as a as a as a young kid as a as a yes. young young kid. And um, you mentioned you mentioned fetal alcohol syndrome, correct. bipolar. Um, you mentioned autism, but I wasn't sure if that was accurate or not. That it is correct. Like that is correct. Okay. Yes. Anything else? And you and, and, those and intermittent explosive disorder. It's no longer even a thing on the diagnosis table but um so okay when somebody and this is just um like something that i it's been my whole life so i'm I'm telling this based off of life events and what i've dealt with but when somebody with fetal alcohol syndrome is put into a high pressure situation their instant reaction is to give something to get them off their back. Okay. And at that point in time, I had been being interrogated. I mean, it probably, probably the third or fourth day of being interrogated four plus hours a day. And each and every day that, you know, Trek, you know, always told me, Oh, we know, you know, something you, we know, you know, have information, you know, we know you're a part of this. And each and every day, I was like, I have no idea what you're talking about. I wasn't even a part of this. I don't even know who this boy is. I uh, didn't even know that family existed. Um, I, I have nothing. And so the reason I had given them the fable of the of them him being in, him being in the backyard was because I was under such an immense amount of pressure that it was just hard for um it's just hard hard to to really i don't know how to word it you know somebody that suffers with a disability the fetal alcohol syndrome their Mm -hmm. their instant reaction is to get them off of their you know to give something to get them off of their 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 back Back. correct So you felt almost like you were being interrogated and you wanted them to back off. So this is correct. Correct. You you shared this moment of where they should dig during like a police interrogation. Correct. Okay. And thus, um, in order to get them off your back, you kind you you said this, but you didn't mean it. Is what you're saying? Exactly. Okay. Um. I will tell you that the location that I pointed out that I gave the direct the detectives was nowhere even relatively close to the shed. Um, I told them that he was buried directly outside, like in the middle of the yard, directly across, right when you walk off the patio. And I know that I knew he wasn't there, which is why they didn't find anything. Mm-hmm. Um, why, yeah. Why did you say there, that area? Because they were going to hound me for a spot anyways. They were going to, they were, they would want a location and, and they did that. I, I initially did try telling him it was just the backyard he was in, but they were like, okay, well, where is he at in the backyard? And that's when I told him he's here in this spot. And I was on, I was on video with, I think Chris, the detective and, 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 um, I, I I pointed them in exactly where 
he, you know, where I told him he was at, you know, he was going to be at, but I knew he wasn't going to be there. And I know it sounds incredibly stupid to do so. I, I didn't know what else to do. Like they, they were so persistent and wanted to, to, they wanted to make sure that I knew something and I didn't, I, I don't, there's no, I, I don't have information. I even took a polygraph and I, Past the polygraph of flying colors. You did. You did take the polygraph. Mm -hmm. People are asking that in chat. If you took a Absolutely. polygraph. Absolutely. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and what about Sarah, your wife? Your she wife. She took said a polygraph too. No. See, and that's like I've been. I'm a very firm believer in God. I may not follow God's word to the T or, you know, um, I may not practice Christianity um, mm -hmm. to the T, but I'm a very strong believer in God and God doesn't tell lies. He's not, he's not known to sit there and tell a lie to somebody. And God speaks through the heart and not the mind. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I know it just, I was appalled when Sarah said that and, and it was on the affidavit because I was like, God doesn't lie. And, and God, the reality is, is God knows the truth behind everything and, and truth will come to light. And, and I just know that it was incredibly, um, just appalling in what, what Sarah was saying, because it, it made no sense. You know, first it was, oh, you know, I didn't do this. I, I don't know anything about it. I would never murder somebody. Then she said, the most high God told me that Stacy did it. And then, um, and then it went from that to going to having to do with Adrian. You know what I mean? There's just no, <clears throat> there's no consistency with, with any, any of her statement at all. And there won't, I just don't. Sarah is not, she's never been an honest person. She's been incredibly deceitful. Um, she's just, she's not, she's not an upfront person. She tries to cover, cover her, her, um, she tries to cover herself to make herself look good. But I mean, there, there's a reason her and I are, are like, I'm getting a divorce with her is because Number one, she was very abusive. Um, you know, she she's abused me to the point of of like me fearing for my life, and um, it, it's just been rough. You know, so yeah. I just how was she I, abusive? Can I ask? Uh, she's um, specifically just to sum it up. I mean, she's punched me, she's kicked me, she's slapped me. Um, she has held me down on the couch with a butcher knife to my throat. Um, she has um, later on down the road and after 2020, uh, I don't remember what month, but there was a time where she held me uh, at gunpoint with a 12 gauge shotgun with uh, a slug loaded in the chamber and um, directly held me, held the gun against my chest. And I mean, it's a very scary situation, you know. And you're 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 talking about something that will that will end your life for the rest of your life, you know. And she's just she's not she's not mentally stable. There's a lot of I mean, I'm sure a lot of people would agree with me. You know, my my family, and my friends know that she's not. Uh, you know, from everything that I've told them, they just. My my family absolutely does not like her at all. Um, they liked her at the start, you know. She she persuaded people to you know she was this nice girl, and you know she betrayed herself to or she portrayed herself to be somebody that she wasn't. Okay, uh, how would you protect yourself when she would abuse you? I, I didn't. I I, I took the abuse because. 
I'm never one, you'll never find me ever hitting a woman. And I know for certain that if I ever were to hit her, I would do an extensive amount of damage. I know my strength. I know what I'm capable of. And I, I just, I don't have it in my heart to fight a woman. Number one, it's wrong. And I don't care, you know, I'm getting abused or not, or getting assaulted, I'm still not going to fight back. You know, if it's, if it's somebody, another guy that, you know, I'm getting in a fight with, maybe it's a different story, you know, but I will never hit a woman. I, I can't. Yeah. You know, so after we talked yesterday, I want to bring up something. It was, um, Brandon was interviewed on another mm -hmm. channel about a year ago. And mm -hmm. he brought up something, correct me if I'm wrong, Brandon brought up a story about a landlord getting mad at you for talking to his daughter a certain way. Does that ring a bell? It was on a channel. Um, Sarah's okay. dad. Sarah's, Sarah's mom dad, and dad was with, the landlord. Yeah, he was the owner of the house. And Sarah, yeah, he got mad at me. And it wasn't... It, I never so talked he got to mad Sarah. at you how he talked to Sarah. Okay. Correct. Yeah. But he, Sarah, Sarah's parents will always side with her on any situation. So Sarah will go tell her parents <clears throat> something completely different other than the truth of what she had done to me. I mean, she'll tell them, make me look like the bad guy. And in reality, she's the one that's doing all this to me. And I, I you know, and then I go to try to tell my side to them and they, they don't want anything to do with that. Okay. Um, I'm getting some people discussing the, the chat. I just slowed it down. I've made it subscriber mm -hmm. only. If people want to join, okay. it sounds like our chat is a little bit uh, more unruly tonight than other nights. Understandably, because this is a really different kind of a live I would mm -hmm. like to remind everyone why we're here and it's because of Michael Vaughn and any information that Stacy can share with us um, is great. So that's, we all want to find Michael, right, Stacy? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, thank you for sharing that. So, so let's, and speaking of that, for people wondering why we're here, that that's the bottom line, why we're here. Um, can you take us back to the day that, that Michael disappeared? It was July 27th, 27, 2021. And then if it's okay mm -hmm. with you, I might add another person here. She's a mod. Her name is Allie. She's wonderful. I trust her. And she knows a lot about this case too. And uh, is it okay if I invite her on? She's backstage right now and I'll just have that's her fine. on and she can help me maybe ask some questions too, if that's okay. That's fine. Does that work? Because mm -hmm. the I, only because the chat is so busy right now and so much is happening, I would appreciate a moderator that's, support here with me. That's okay. Fine. Thank you. Okay. So Ellie's on mute right now. I can see that. Um, she doesn't want to go on camera, understandably, but this is one of our moderators, our channel moderators. I know mm -hmm. Ellie well. And, um, okay, go ahead. But can you take us through um, July 27th, 2021, or start the day before if you want, whatever, um, what you remember of that day and um, a timeline. And then, Ellie, feel free to pipe in anytime you have a question. Thank you for helping me here tonight. Since yep. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for being here. All right. Um, so July 26th, um, I'll just start the, the day before, just to kind of give you guys an idea. July 26th, um, Sarah, Brandon, and I had taken a trip to Owyhee Reservoir, which is in Ontario, just outside of, like, Oregon a little ways. And for those that... Okay, and for those uh, to understand the geography, I've been mm -hmm. there. Ontario, Oregon is right on the border of Fruitland, Idaho. So this oh, is right. a this is a border town, Oregon, 
Idaho. It's where they beat Fruitland, Ontario. Okay, go ahead. And uh, we had decided we wanted to go fishing and um, wanted to go to Oahe Reservoir, which is probably about an hour, I would say, 45 minutes to an hour from Fruitland. Um, and it's where we were that whole day. Um, just, just to kind of let everybody know. Um, and then, you know, the 27th was, was just, um, just a normal, typical day. You know, we didn't, nothing different was about it. I mean, we started the day, you know, got up, had breakfast, um, you know, shower, um, you know, just getting ready for the day. <clears throat> um, and then um, Adrian wanted to go see his son, I believe, or daughter. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what it, the gender was, but I know he wanted to go see his kid. And so Sarah and Brandon um, and Adrian all left probably about 11 o'clock in the afternoon or in the morning. I'm sorry. And they went to go take Adrian to it's like Nampa or Boise, one of the two. Okay. Um, and they went and met. They went to like Applebee's and um, um, Ross, I believe. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then. Um, Adrian ended up meeting his, his son or daughter. Um, and then he ended up staying in Boise or Napa that night. The whole day he was gone. And Sarah and Brandon came home um, later on. But backtracking, um, Sarah had called me with a taxi phone call. Um saying that a guy needed to go from Ontario, Oregon to the Boise airport. And so Sarah was not home at the time to do it. So I was like, okay, I'll do it. Um, you know, it was a $150 ride, you know? Um, so I was like, yeah, absolutely. So I went and picked this guy up in Ontario and then drove him and left about one o'clock um in the afternoon uh on the way out of the subdivision i ended up uh having to stop at the um the pull-off spot the splash pad because i had dropped my can of chew um and it, i wasn't able to reach it um even trying to reach across the console i was a pretty decently big guy and it's not exactly easy for me to reach something. And my belly kind of gets in the way. Um, and so ended up uh, having to get out of the car and walked around, opened the door, grabbed my can of chew, walked back around the driver's side and left. Um, that was probably about 1 15, 1 ish. Um, I, again, my, my time frame's not verbatim this is just all speculation the timestamps i do have um i have already uh i haven't sent them to you but i do have you said that you i think you said you've seen them of uh, the timestamps of the night of towing the vehicle and stuff mm -hmm. um so we'll get into that but anyways so i went and picked up um this taxi customer and drove him to Boise, dropped him off at the airport. Uh, now, mind you, keep in mind, Ontario to Boise is about 60, 60 minutes, 61 minutes. Okay. Um, now that's keep in mind that's because Ontario, you know, you have to backtrack a little bit to get there. Um, so, we, after I dropped him off, I stopped at uh, Labor Dave, uh, who was a independent contractor, business owner, 
Uh, the guy owner's name is David Fears, and I ended up stopping there to visit him for, I'd say probably maybe an hour. And then okay. after I, after I visited him, I got another taxi phone call on the way home from Sarah, saying a guy needed to go somewhere in Ontario, and I was already on the way back, so I didn't think it was. Um, sorry, sorry about that, Stacy. That's no, okay. <laughs> um, we'll get to that later. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about the comments. I'm going to stop pinning comments. So you can just share. <laughs> I was like, am I supposed to answer these at the same time? No, no, sorry. <laughs> just okay. you can focus on uh, me and Ellie. So <clears throat> I have a couple questions. I want to kind of back up a little bit. So I, I had to step away for a second. So I apologize if you already shared this and I just missed it. But I saw on social media that you had posted the day before mm -hmm. that you had to go to the emergency room. Did you already share what that was about? Or can you share what that no, was about? No, I haven't yet. So okay. she actually went to the ER on the 25th. And I can send you timestamps if you want. Um, but I have pictures of her in the emergency room on the 25th. I posted that the next day. I think it was like after midnight when that posted or something like that. Um, but I know it was posted the next day because that's just when I posted it. Okay. Um, but she was in the emergency room. It was something to do with her diabetes, I think, if I remember right. Okay. Um, and her stomach was really hurting her. Um, Sarah was in the hospital a lot. She Her diabetes, she refused to really take care of herself with it. Mm -hmm. Her diabetes was always, always between the four or five hundred range, oh, um, wow. and she just did not uh, take care of it. And I, there, and she, it's not that she didn't try, but she didn't try hard enough. Does that make mm -hmm. sense? Um, so, yeah. So the twenty fifth, she was in the hospital. Um, the night of the 25th and then um, the 26th is when I posted that video okay. or that, that, that post on Facebook. Okay. There was a post. Okay. Mm. And then if it's okay, just while we're paused, I also want to go back to um, the landlord story from Brandon, mm. because I think there was a miscommunication between you, Lauren and, and Stacy. Um Brandon told a story about the land your landlord at the lube shop. Like, did you own like do you have like a lube like a business? We like owned a, a we owned a mechanic or a, a oil change company in Ontario, yes. Okay. And then so I think it was that landlord that maybe there was some sort of oh yeah, no, so his his daughter, yeah. So it wasn't I was never disrespectful to his daughter. What happened was there was a miscommunication when I has signed a lease agreement with Art. His name was Arturo Ro Rojas. Mm -hmm. And I signed a lease agreement with him for like 500 bucks a month to rent out the shop bay. And um, he told me I could use anything in the shop that I needed, you know, an air compressor, power washer, whatever it needed, you know, I didn't spray off because it was concrete. You know, when you get fluids all over the ground, you don't just leave them there. You know, you want to spray them off and get them all cleaned. You know what I mean? For the next time. So, uh, his daughter had come in and like was like, "Why are you using my dad's stuff?" And then it was just, it wasn't more. It, it was never disrespectful to her. I was just, I, I was frustrated because I'm being told one thing by Art, and his mm -hmm. daughter's coming in saying another thing. So I was trying to re relay to her that this is what he said. No, you're not allowed to do that. Well, why is you, and I think I used the F word like once. I don't know, probably. But I was like, well, why is your dad telling me this then? And you're telling me another thing. Well, you're not supposed to be doing that. Okay. But that's why art had, it was never an argument with art at all. Um, it was literally him just telling me, you know, my daughter came and told me you were a little bit rude with her. But sometimes I don't, some, it's not that exactly that I'm a rude person. It's just the way I come off at people sometimes. And okay. I think that was more so what it was focused around. But Brandon tells a lot of things in his videos that are not of accuracy. Oh, uh, I didn't realize that. Or, no, he, he's not. 
What's that? Would are there any other inaccuracies that you would like to that you know well, that you said that you I would mean, like to address? Either. Um just refer like he did a lot of interviews with the JLR investigates and um he just says stupid th you know things that just don't I don't remember verbatim right now but if you guys listen to his videos Brandon tells a lot of things that aren't true you know just like the thing in one of the videos of he did with JLR specifically uh, he said that the night in question, Michael went missing, that he c asked if he could use Carson's truck mm -hmm. because it had a spotlight or a giant light bar on top. That never happened. Like, I, I know Carson to the T. Um, you know, not his personal life, but how Carson operates, what he does for work, you know, how he is with his vehicles, his stuff. And I even called Carson actually a couple weeks ago. And and wanted to let him know what Brandon was saying on social media about Carson, and and how Carson, uh, how Brandon said that Carson let him use his truck, and I knew Carson was gonna flip shit because Carson was not, <laughs> Carson never lets his vehicle be used by anybody. He doesn't even let his friends use his vehicles. So uh, I stand up for Carson a hundred percent. Uh, and and just in that sense, because I'm the same way. I don't let people just randomly just use my vehicles. You know what I mean? Like right. your vehicles are like your baby. They're like your child. You know. So it just doesn't make any sense as to why you would want somebody else to use your vehicle to risk any potential opportunity of not having you know something happening to it and you ending up with no vehicle. Yeah. Um, well, I'll go ahead and ask one more question I had around Brandon mm -hmm. since I kind of took us off track with that. No, you're um, good. Brandon also shared, it might have been, even been in the same interview, that um, you, and, you and Sarah had asked him to impregnate Sarah and, so that you, you guys could have a baby. Is that no. something that happened? <laughs> that he's got it all backwards. So... Sarah approached me because Sarah and I had discussed having a kid and I told Sarah that I didn't think it was a good idea because we were not financially stable to provide for a kid. Yeah, um, that makes sense. Sarah approached me because I like Sarah was um, positive for herpes from her cheating on me. And when I found that out, I was no way Jose on having intercourse with her. Okay. And Sarah was very frustrated with that. And okay. I was like, well, you did this to yourself. Okay. And, um, I just, I'm not, I'm not down to catch any, any, yeah, no, I'm good. Uh, so, um, Sarah approached me, and asked if Brandon, maybe she could basically intercourse with Brandon. And I told her I didn't like it, but she's like, well, I just, I, I really want a baby. And I feel like this might be a good idea. And there, there's no arguments with Sarah. Like when she wants something, she wants something. And she's going to do it regardless, like just like her cheating on me. So many different aspects and routes. Um, now, mind you, I had my 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 share of cheating, but I cheated when I found out she was cheating on me. So it wasn't it wasn't I did it out of um, just to cheat on her because, I you know, I wanted to. It was, I guess, more so to get retaliation okay. so um or to get back at her i guess um but as far as the whole sex with brandon thing that's where the love triangle came in, into play okay. that's what police were calling it is called the love triangle because um 
I don't know where I got brought into it, but I, I wasn't down to have a kid. Sarah wanted the kid, and that's why Brandon was being used as a um, a donor in a sense, but a more physical donor. Police, police were referring to this as a love triangle. Mm -hmm. You're right. Police brought this up for anyone wondering. Mm -hmm. This is why we're asking this question, because this is part of the police investigation. Mm -hmm. So and why was it? Go ahead. No, go ahead, Ellie. So I just wonder, like, what made them start referring to this relationship as a love triangle? Because it seems like you, you're saying that, like, you kind of knew she was asking Brandon about it, but it was okay. kind of a, as a result of you not wanting to be intimate. And so that she kind of started dating your friends instead. Mm -hmm. so you think that's where they were kind of getting the love triangle thing from? Correct. Or where do you think that I was I mean, that's from? my take on it. I so would have never like called it a love triangle. I, there was no love in it for me. So <laughs> she was apparently trying to do what she could to get the love, but I wasn't. And you kind of, you, okay, you weren't. No. Oh, okay. No, Sarah was very, like I said, she was very deceitful and very, um, <laughs> very, um, how do I word it? Like she cheated on me a lot. Uh, mm -hmm. especially behind my back. Um, I specifically found out when I got arrested, when I started getting questioned, that she was doing oral things with Adrian. Uh, so let, can, I ask you this? can I ask you this? Mm -hmm. So for those asking, some people mentioned they with Dr. John was here. Uh, me too. He, he, but uh, he, he gave it. Stacy and John talked for two hours, just the two of them. Mm -hmm. last night and it was incredible and for those that want to see that uh it is specifically and purposely um made more private and you can find that on patreon.com slash mm -hmm. crime or as a youtube member but let me ask you this because when you were talking to my husband john yesterday you said that you were infertile and that Correct. you wanted the kid but sarah didn't and now i'm seeing no. it the other way no no okay. I, I, I no, no you think you misheard that i never wanted okay. the kid okay she wanted the kid solely okay i wanted no that was there was a miscommunication there okay no, okay definitely did not want a kid i told sarah that i said we are not ready to have a kid okay but did she know that you were infertile? Did she know yeah. that you were not able yeah. to have children but she was asking you for a child mm-hmm Okay. Um, and go ahead, Ellie. And just before we move off this topic, because um, I know it's personal and, and all of that. Um, so I've been having trouble like trying to figure out was she um, behind your back on with both Brandon and Adrian? Oh, yeah. Oh, a Brandon, then, Brandon to start? No. When they first started, because I was like, you know, fine, do it, do what you want to do with them. Like, just don't bring me into it. And then I got exhausted after, he, you know, first she was like, it's only going to be for a couple days. <clears throat> and then she was like, and then that couple days turned into a week. And then after a week, I was like, what's going on here? You said you only needed a couple days. Well, I just, I, I really need some more time. And I, and that point I put a stop to it. I said, no. I said, this is not, I'm not okay. I, I'm tired of listening to you guys have intercourse and having to listen to you, like the sounds. Like it was just not like it was hard, you know? Um, yeah. But that was, yeah, that's beside that, that the, the like so-called permission that I gave Sarah, like wasn't exactly an agreement. It was more so of a, you know, do what you want to do because you're going to do it anyways type of thing. Um, which it was. And, um, you know, even after it stopped, I mean, I guess I found out from the detectives that she was continuously doing it behind my back with him and doing things with Adrian. So it, it's just notorious with her, you know, it's, she's known for that. And remind me, was it Adrian or Brandon that you, 
asked her to kick out because of this situation. Adrian. Adrian. But mm. the day... So the day that that Michael went missing, you were with, you were alone, but she was with Brandon and Adrian for majority of the day. Uh, they returned probably. Sarah and Brandon returned. I would say probably mid afternoon. Uh, I don't have an exact timestamp for that, but it was <laughs> they returned. Um, and I would say not mid, maybe later afternoon, definitely okay. before dinner time. Yeah, so they, like, they went to Applebee's or something yeah, and like correct. eat food together and correct. And you were fine <laughs> with that? You were just like whatever and like, that wasn't causing any <laughs> stress there was or nothing I could do about it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to try to get us back on track here because I'm the one that took us off track. So I'll try to get us back on track. So that day, Sarah went with Adrian and Brandon to eat. Correct. And you stayed, where do you live again? Or where you were, you stayed at your house in Fruitland. Mm -hmm. And they were kind of running all over different areas of Idaho doing errands and, and different things. Right. Correct. Okay. And then once they returned back, that's when you guys went to, like, go get Brandon's car that was broken down? Correct. And how far away is that? Because I'm not familiar with that area. 48 minutes. 48 minutes. So you, Brandon, and Sarah loaded up in your truck or your car? Truck. Truck. Okay. And then from there... Um, you guys started to head on this 48 minute journey to get his, mm -hmm. his car where, so was it his car? Like at his mom's house or like, where was it? Correct. At his mom's house in Cuna. Cuna. Okay. And you said, I would listen to your interview last night. You said like the, the, um, car had like a steering fluid problem. No, the truck. We, oh, the truck had a steering the fluid truck, problem. Yeah. Cause we had to stop little bit before Arizona Street off of pretty much when you take a left outside the subdivision there's a little like, like pull off spot on the right hand side of the road before Arizona we had pulled off there and um, and uh, I had Sarah pop the hood I got out of the truck Sarah no mind you Sarah's driving the whole mm -hmm. time just keep that in mind Brandon's in the back seat behind me and I was in the passenger seat um, had Sarah pop the hood. I got out um, and um, opened the hood, unscrewed the power steering reservoir cap, and poured power steering fluid in. Uh, and then um, that was that was that. Okay. Um, okay. So I was thinking that Sarah got out too. I was thinking that's what no. you said yesterday. No. It's like pop the hood is just like from being inside. Mm -hmm. Okay. And Brandon waited in the back seat while you guys mm -hmm. he didn't help you out or anything. No, I didn't need his help. Okay. I mean, I just pretty simple job, you know what I mean? It's not like you need two hands for it. I've never done it, so I wasn't really sure what it entailed. <laughs> So during that time when you got out, um, that kind of became like, that's kind of like the, the stopping point in your journey. You got out, you fixed it. That's when you saw the little boy. Correct. Okay. And then from there, you got back in the truck and you mm -hmm. um, went to whatever city. Um, Cuna. Cuna. Okay. Um, and you said you didn't see anyone odd in the neighborhood or you didn't notice anything where there are more people outside than normal. Is it about normal? I'm not familiar with the area. I know Lauren said she's visited. I when never we got, have, so. when we got back or what? 
No, like when you left, like is it a neighborhood? Oh no, it was just a, a lot normal. of people are outside no, or not at all. Not at all. There was literally hardly anybody. Okay. Uh, maybe a few people here and there, but nothing. I mean, nothing unusual about that, you know. I mean, yeah. just a neighborhood. Yeah, I was just trying to get a sense. I know some areas people like sit on their front porch in the evenings and others have like a lot of kids and they play games outside, you know, after everyone gets off work. And so we're just kind of trying to get a sense of like what the typical neighborhood vibe is since I'm not familiar with the area at all. Mm -hmm. Well, it's just, it's a, it's a quiet neighborhood, you know, uh, there's not a whole lot of problems at all around the area. Uh, or, I mean, in our side of things. Mm -hmm. um, and you and you guys lived there for quite a while, didn't you? Before since twenty twenty, yeah. For those wondering, John's John's interview is for members only and Patreon only. A members only head to your community post channel members. It's your members only community post. You'll find it. Um, did you have anything else you wanted to share um, right now, Ellie? Any other questions? No. If you, you want. know, no, I'm not as experienced at this as you. And so I feel like my questions kind of bounce around a little bit. And so I don't know if you want to kind of keep us on track and I'll just hop in here and there or. Yeah. Well, I think best for you and Stacy. Sure. I just think, Stacy, that it's really important that we get your timeline again. Um, we were going th through it. Where did we end? Um, I have no but idea. The, the day that he was, the day that Monkey went missing, you, you there was something about some, you changed some fluid in your car. So, so you went, oh, it looks like he's frozen a bit. Uh, or am um, I frozen? Are you frozen too, Ellie? Is it me or is it? Um, you're okay. So it's just well, you're, Stacey. You're, 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 you're frozen. Now you're not. Okay. I'm not frozen. Okay. I'm so, frozen. so, you know, I think we really need to nail this timeline, Stacy, because, you know, you, uh, you know, you say you're honest, mm -hmm. um, you're a straight shooter, but then you also say that you didn't tell the truth to police about, Michael being in your backyard. Mm. Um, so I think I just really would like to like nail down the timeline that you, you shared the day that Michael mm. went missing and there was something you were filling up your car. So, so where did we end? You, you were at the ER the night before. Um, take us back to the whole day. Can you walk us through the whole day again? Let's start, let's start from square one. Um, because an alibi is important. If you're saying you're innocent, let's get your alibi, sure. right? That's so mm -hmm. let's hear it. Uh, so, um, 27th was just a normal day. Um, it started out, wake up, um, we had breakfast, coffee, um, just sat around, shot the crap, um. And then I know Adrian wanted to go visit his son or daughter uh, who was in either in Napa or Boise. <clears throat> so um, Sarah wanted to offer to take him to go take him to his son or daughter. I, I, I would give a, give a, a gender. I don't know. So, mm -hmm. um, okay. He was taken, or they, Brandon and Sarah took him to go see him. Um, I got a phone call. That was about 11 o'clock. I think they left in the morning. Mm -hmm. I got a phone call from Sarah on her way to taking Adrian to go, um, to go see his kid. 
And Sarah said there's a taxi customer that needs to go from Ontario to the Boise airport. I was like, okay, I can definitely do that. So um, I went and um, got ready, got finished getting ready. I grabbed, I'm trying to remember them. And mind you, this is about one o'clock when I left the house, one fifteen ish. Um, okay. I was in the Lexus that we had, the white Lexus at the time. <clears throat> and um, drove to Ontario. Before getting to Ontario, would stop at the splash pad area to pull off to grab my can of chew. I think this is where we left off, by the way, just a minute ago. Yeah. Um, stopped at the splash pad, walked around the vehicle to grab my can of chew. Uh, and then walked back to the driver's side and left. Uh, okay. and, I've, and I've seen that splash pad. It's very close. Correct. It's very close to where Michael mm -hmm. lived, right? It's a center place, Correct. a lot of kids. So you Correct. stopped there. You like, that's, I have to be honest, that's a little concerning, you know, that you'd be there at a place where kids go. There was hardly anybody there that day. And and it was the only place I could pull off beside, I mean, there was no, literally no parking. You can't just park in the middle of the road. And so I literally parked off. And, and keep in mind, too, they have CCTV footage of me. I was actually shown that by uh, Fruitland police detectives when I was questioned. So they have me on CCTV, and it's exactly as I'm telling you guys. Of me getting out of the car, pulling in the splash bag, getting out of the car, walking around the vehicle, grabbing my can of chew, and going back to the driver's side, getting in the car, and leaving. That's literally verbatim what it was. And did you see any kids? Uh, there was a few kids, I think, playing in the park with their parents, but I didn't. Even, I didn't acknowledge them. You know, I mean, it was just a. I mean, normal activity, you know, that's what the splash pads for is for kids. And I why change it? Yeah. And why change it there rather than um, your house, which is also really close? Fruitland's small. You know what I mean? I, I mean, again, I've seen this. What do well, you mean, change you, it? Oh, I thought you were changing the fluid right there. No, no. Oh, no, you just stopped pad, there. I yeah. stopped there to grab my can of chew. Got it. So you I stopped to grab it there. I didn't change okay. the fluid. I changed the fluid on be, before 8th. It was on 8th Street, but it was before Arizona Street, right as you pull out of the subdivision. Thank you for clarifying that. Mm -hmm. I'm listening to you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So you stopped just to get your chew at the splash. Correct. Pad. Correct. Is, is that something you do often? Like, is that just like a pull-off spot where you just kind of pull in Not there? Not at all. Like, it was just in this. Not at all. And it was honestly... Um, Uh, it was on a just like a like spur of the moment thing. Uh, like I always have my chew everywhere I go. Um, considering, I mean, I, I have chew everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I've chewed for years. And um, I did, I went to grab it out of my pocket while I was driving. And I lost it out of my pocket. And it fell across the console across the other side of, of the passenger seat. And I was not in arm's length. I mean, it was probably an arm's length for a skinny person, but I, I'm not, I wasn't skinny and not skinny at all. You know, so I literally pull off and, you know, I've always been a safe driver and ethical driver. You know what I mean? And I'm not going to jeopardize causing somebody a wreck or anything like that. I always practice safe, you know, and safe techniques or safe driving. So I didn't pull off on the side of the road or I mean, there's no place to pull up on the side of the road. I'm saying I didn't pull off on the middle of the road. So I'm not going to block traffic. So the, the first, the, the nearest, easiest first place to pull off was the splash pad. And that's what I did. But it was less than probably a minute of being there. But it is time stamped. And I, I saw the, the CCTV footage. Okay. So it wasn't like someone reported you or anything like that? No, not at all. Nobody reported me at all. No. 
Was it was it busy there when you pulled off? Or? Not at all. It was probably I mean, it was one o'clock in the afternoon. It was really hot. You know what I mean? There was no. I mean, I, I wouldn't want. If, I mean, if I was a if I was a parent, I would not want my kids to be out there in 90, 95 degree heat. You know what I mean? It's playing in the water. You know what I mean? I mean, I, I hate saying it like that, but like it's like going swimming. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? When it's super hot and the reflection of the water just gives you a sunburn. And that's kind of the way I see, you know, I don't know. I'm not a parent though, you know. Um, right. I just know that there was nothing unusual about that day. Nobody called me in. I literally stopped to grab the can of chew and left. That was it. And it just happened. I mean, it is interesting. I've seen the splash pad. That's all I'm going to say. So you stopped. Mm-hmm. There. You know, it is It's where children go. So it's not the best place to have stopped, unfortunately. Um, you know, um, yeah, but I guarantee you, I'm not the only person that doesn't have kids that has gone to the splash pad. Yeah, you know, for I, sure. I, uh, I, don't, I didn't see anything wrong with it or weird. Like, I wasn't doing anything wrong at all, you know, other than grabbing my can of chew. I mean, would you rather me block the roadway or would you rather me? You know what I mean? And yeah, uh, yeah, no, totally already, agree. You know? and, and so that everyone knows, do you have the timestamps of, of mm-hmm. where that sixty footage was? What What are the timestamps? Taken at one thirty p.m. Okay. Okay. So then, okay, and that was um. So then you, what? Where do you go after that? I left. I went to Ontario, picked up the taxi client. Took the taxi client to the Boise airport. And mind you, it takes about 60, 61 minutes, 62 minutes to get from Ontario to Boise, depending on traffic, which in the middle of one o'clock time frame, one o'clock hour, it's not busy. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, it's just the, it's the least busiest time of the day. Um, other than in the early morning, you know, like eight o'clock, nine o'clock in the morning, but. Um, drove to Boise, dropped the, the client off, went over to go visit Labor Dave, um, hung up there for about an hour, hour and a half, went back to, uh, on my way back to Fruitland, um, got a taxi phone call again from Sarah. She was already at home. Um, when she had called me, um, so I got a taxi phone call from her saying this guy needs to go to another place in Ontario. I think we had gone to A&W or something like that because that's where my time stamp is from. Um, so we went, took, I took him and dropped him off and then came home. Okay. And then, so what time did you get home? Mm, Timestamp. So the the picture was taken at the the AMW. I think was like it. Uh, I have to go back and look at it. I don't. I don't remember the exact. Hold on. Let me look at. It. Um. um we just lost Stacy. He said he was going to hold on and he was going to go look at something, but he. Logged off. We'll see if he jumps back on. Um, we'll wait for a little bit. Okay, maybe he tried to exit one screen to look up what you asked, and it accidentally knocked him off, and he'll be right back. Right, right. I think he often goes on his own. So, um, so let's just see. I'll text him real quick. So I I just want to share some things for people too. Um, There's a reason that John's interviews staying more private, but there's also a reason that it was alive. It's important to do these conversations live. And there's a reason we're doing this one a little bit more publicly. And that's all I'll say. So I understand that this is a very 
unusual uh, lie for hidden true crime. It might feel off brand to many people. And I get that. I mean, Ellie, would you agree? It's probably something that when it comes to our channel, people aren't as used to. I think Ellie can speak to that because she's a moderator. But yeah, if this uh, is, oh, go ahead. Yeah, I could see how it seems a little off brand, but I think also it's on brand at the same time because it's listening to understand and really allowing people to share their experience, their lens and what they have so we can all um, get a better understanding of uh, what's happening. I agree. Sorry, and all I, that's okay. And all I can do is just say to people, there are things I can say right now and there are things I can't say. And that's, that's all I can say. So Thanks, three, 323 PM. That's what I was doing. I was checking the timestamp. 3.23 p.m. is when I was at A&W. Okay. <clears throat> but you're, you know, okay. You're around. So, and what, what were Brandon and Adrian, where were Brandon and Adrian at this time? Because they were also dubbed persons of interest or I think persons of interest by police, maybe suspects. I don't know. What were in, in. Adrian wasn't even home. He never came back. He, right. stayed in, he stayed in Nampa and Boise that whole night. Do you think he could have come back without you knowing, or do you feel certain he was there? No, I know he was He was gone. Oh, my God. You okay? Um, yeah, getting blown up with phone calls. Um, um, no, I know for certain he was not. He wasn't even at our house. He wasn't even in the area. He doesn't. He didn't have a vehicle. You know what I mean. So he had no way to even get back to Fruitland that night. Okay. Okay. Um, so, so then that would mean that you would be the be law just admit like you you would be law enforcement's main suspect then because you were there, right? Or you and Sarah. I'm just trying to understand how were you made a suspect? Like kind of like the main one. I, I'm appalled. I have no idea. It doesn't make sense because I, again, I have timestamps of, of our whereabouts that night. And when we left, what time, you know, what time we got back in the neighborhood, um, nothing adds up. There's no, there, a, a person does not pass a polygraph test. Uh -huh. And I mean, you don't just get a false positive polygraph. It doesn't happen like that. You can, fail a polygraph test but to to um to get a false positive polygraph test doesn't match up yeah i haven't seen um, your polygraph test i want to say to audiences uh, the the viewers i haven't seen it i don't know about your polygraph no, test no i i specifically remember getting the polygraph done and i literally remember the tester that gave the test or the polygraph to me after he got done submitting the the results because he had to get um he had to send them off to um i guess he said washington dc because they have like their forensic people there that read those mm -hmm. um, he said that he came back in and he goes how do you feel you did and i said i i, I was honest i know i passed it so, um, um, and so he, and he goes, he goes, exactly. He goes, I know you passed, he goes, you did pass it. So, I mean, I, I was told by <coughs> the polygraph tester and also detectives, that's why they stopped interrogating or questioning me that day. Because I had passed the polygraph test. So yeah. when you say you passed it, does that mean there was no deception on any question? Or does that mean, like, what does that mean when you pass a polygraph test? No, it means you, you pass a polygraph test like you have not lied on any question that they okay. have asked you. And did Adrian and... Sarah and Brandon, did they all pass theirs too? Adrian never did a polygraph to my knowledge. I know Sarah and Brandon did. Um, 
I was told two different things. I was told they passed, and I was told they didn't pass. So I don't know. I'm not going to speculate, but I'm I'm not going to I'm not going to also I, again I'm being an upfront person, and I'm mm-hmm. not going to say they passed or they didn't pass because I don't know. I just what I'm being told. So, um, so you guys aren't in contact did. anymore, like Sarah, oh. and like you. Sarah I don't talk. Brandon, Sarah's in prison. Okay. And Brandon, I want nothing to do with him or Adrian. I'm just not, I'm not, not cool with them at all. Okay. Is it because of this investigation and things no. like that or is it? No, just because Brandon, just the way he's, he's treated me and like, you know, what he was doing behind my back with Sarah after, you know, it was supposed to stop. I just, I'm not okay with any of it. Yeah. That just seems like, I don't know, it's kind of confusing to me a little bit because like you knew that he was having these relationships with your wife, but then you're also like being nice and like going to get his car for him and you're going to fix it for him and you're towing it. Like that's hard on your vehicle and the gas money it takes to get there and just all the other things. So it's like, I'm just trying to figure out when that friendship really deteriorated because obviously at some point you guys were really close friends. You were willing to let him live at your house. You were, you know, she was doing inappropriate things with your wife. So, I mean, at some point it really Mm -hmm. crumbled. And so I was just trying to figure out like, what was the straw that broke the camel back? Yeah. Honestly, just, just having a lot of time on 18 months to think about it. And, um, I just wasn't good with it. You know, I, I mean, I realized that he really wasn't there to be my friend as much as he was trying to get with my wife. And, um, you know, I just wasn't okay with it anymore. And I didn't want to take part in it, you know, um, Brandon and I have had good times. We had some bad times, but, you know, just for for the best of everything, I just don't want nothing to do with them. Well, do you think Brandon could have done it then and is framing you? I have no idea. I don't have, I again, we were all gone that night. So that's why nothing adds up. Like nothing adds up as, as how, the, how that would even become possible. Um, it just seems like if things were going well and there was a love triangle, maybe, maybe, I mean, do you think he's turned on you with police? Brandon? Yeah. He didn't have nothing to turn on me with. I wasn't even part of this. Well, trying to frame, trying to frame you is what I mean. Framing you. Do you think, I mean, do you think he could have done something? I don't see Brandon doing something like that. No. Just like I don't, I didn't see Sarah ever doing something like that. I didn't see, I wouldn't see Adrian doing something like that. Well, Adrian could be questionable, given his, you know, what I've told, been told by the Texas about his history. But a, or Brandon and Sarah, I wouldn't have even had a thought. So I don't, I don't really have a response to that, to be honest. Like, I don't, I'm. I don't know what to think. After A and W, uh, Sterling pointed out that it, it, I'll read it. Actually, I starred this. Um, this was important. I did want to clear this up. Mm-hmm. Sterling said, "You know, so A and W is at three thirty, and it's an hour and a half drive to get home. Would that get you back to the location at about five p.m. ish, or what? You know, can you clarify that kind of timeline for us?" A and W is in Ontario, Sterling. So it takes to go from Ontario to Fruitland is about maybe 10 minutes, 15 minutes, depending on which part of Ontario you're in. Okay. Where was, where was the 45 minute drive then? It wasn't coming from coming back home. Okay. So the A and W was in Fruitland. They have an A and W in Fruitland, or they have an A and W in Ontario. Where was this A and W then? In Ontario, so that's that. Gotcha. But it's fifteen minutes. So where did you go? I 
I understand what you're saying. And I thought Ontario was really close too, but you went someplace and it was a 45 minute to an hour and a half drive. Where was that? Oh, that was, that was the night before. That Got was you. the day before we went fishing at Owyhee Reservoir. Okay. Okay. So you're home at about, so what time were you home then after A&W? So what time did you get home? Probably about 27. four o'clock if I had to put a time on it. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you went straight home? Like, did you see any, any children? Anywhere. No. Okay. And then, and you never saw Michael? I've never even, no, I've never seen that face a day in my life. Okay. And then, until he was missing, you mean? Correct. You did. Correct. And when he then, went missing, yeah, that's, yes. But yeah. before that, I didn't know he existed. I didn't know there he had there was a family that was around the neighborhood that existed. Like I didn't have any clue. Sarah and I didn't really associate with our neighbors. You know, we kind of we our our neighborhood people. We kind of kept by you know away. I don't say I don't say away from, but like we didn't really meet a whole lot of our neighbors, you know, like outside the neighborhood. We were aware of the people that were some of the people that were around the neighborhood in our neighborhood subdivision. Yeah. But monkey lived on a whole separate side of the, you know, like separate subdivision, like, uh, you know, you have to drive across the other side of eighth street. Yeah. So I think, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I thought, Yesterday, when you were talking to my husband, you might have said you got home around five or six. Uh, but what were you doing from four to eight? Uh, Sam Evans is asking. Uh, 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. was when, when I got back. We had dinner. Um, and then Brandon and Sarah and me all wanted to go. Or, oh, I didn't want to go, but I did it because he had been bugging us to go get his vehicle. So we left to about, I want to say, I don't know. I, again, these, these time frames are all speculated, you know, hypothetical, because I don't have verbatim time frames other than the time frames to show when we were in CUNA and the route we took, et cetera. So, I just want to point that out for people because there's a lot of people that question the timing and everything. So that's what I just let you know. That's what I'm trying to do. Yeah. I respect that because, you know, you're thinking back to, you know, uh, 2021, 2021. So I respect ago. that, but it, you know, but it also, but then to play devil's advocate, I kind of want to say it's, it's really important. It's kind of everything. Cause we're now mm -hmm. getting to the time, the moment, you know, Michael disappeared and it's probably, mm -hmm. even though it was so long ago, it's like one of the most kind of important moments that I think really show where you were and that you mm -hmm. weren't, you know, in any place you could have taken Michael. And I get, if you can't, if you don't know, you don't know, but it would definitely be a sure bet to get police off your back. Right. Like mm -hmm. if you had a sure alibi. Well, the police already have all this. That's okay. why I haven't been charged. Um, you know, it's, it's, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. You haven't been charged. You, Stacy has not been charged with anything. Um, he's not been cleared, but he's not been charged. So I think, you know, I'm just trying to help you out, Stacy. Honestly, yeah. like people are looking at you. We're not the first interview you did. People brought that up. You've mm -hmm. done, you've done podcast interviews. You've been doing them and. I'm here trying to help you I know. Like, I know. because, because, um, gosh, if, if you want to say, look, I'm innocent and it's about time the police clear me getting mm -hmm. this kind of alibi solidified is like, mm -hmm. it's kind of like the priority, right? Like mm -hmm. you've got an alibi. That's okay. There you go. There you go. Like Perfect. we're done. Like you're innocent. So this is me kind of trying to like help you be like, gosh, let's get this figured out. Like, so, so what you're saying is you packed, did you pack a duffel bag too, to go to Cuba? No, Brandon, no. Brandon 
had a bunch of dirty clothes because he brought his clothes initially from Cuda. Um, had a, some dirty clothes. Um, I watched him grab because he stayed on the couch. Brandon always slept on the couch. So watched him grab his duffel bag before we left. Um, it was open, nothing in it, you know, completely empty. And watched him put all of his dirty clothes inside the duffel bag and zip it up. Okay. And so so yeah. that night, the night the monkey went missing, there was a duffel bag. Mm -hmm. How big was it? How big was the duffel bag? It was small. I mean, it was not a giant duffel bag. This duffel bag that had like a shoulder strap on it and like the two little handles that Velcro, you could put the Velcro around it to hold the handles together. It's a small duffel bag. I mean, <clears throat> it was so not big enough to put a body in. Okay. okay. Yeah. Wow. And I, do you know what that even crossed my mind? But okay. So a small duffel bag. What was it? And it was full of laundry. You said, or what was Just it? Nothing but clothes. Branded clothes. Okay. And that was at five p.m. And you guys all went together. Yes. We left. Well, no, we we were at the house. We didn't leave the house. I think until probably about six thirty. At night. That's what I okay. told John yesterday. And why did you guys take the clothes to Brandon's mom? Brandon wanted to go wash his clothes at his mom's house because he needed to get new clothes anyways. And uh, different clothes. So he just brought his dirty clothes to his mom's house and then got a bunch of new clothes and brought them back to the house. Okay. So, so that's why he didn't wash them at... Like, why didn't he wash him at your house? Because he wanted. He was already going. He his he did all of his laundry. I don't know. He just we there was it made no sense to us, but he always did his laundry at his mom's house. Always, it didn't matter if it it wasn't just that night, but he would always do his laundry at his mom's house. It was just something that he preferred to do. Okay. I don't know if it was a comfortability thing or if it was, you know preferred I, I don't know it just it, it didn't add up it didn't make sense but you know we weren't going to question it you know people have their own things yeah if it, so if it was small like a small yeah. duffel bag so it wasn't one of the ones that like had the shoulder strap or anything it was just like no it had, a, it had a shoulder strap but it was it was how do i word it take a small duffel bag okay but okay. on the duffel bag it had Zippers on the lengthwise the ends of the duffel bag, uh -huh. and it had a shoulder strap, and it had two little handles that you could put the Velcro connector to hold the handles, so you can make one, one once one handle basically, okay. and that's what it was. But it was small. It was not. You probably could put. I don't know. You could probably put. I don't know. A small amount of clothes in it. I mean, you could not, and that's, that's packing it, you know? So do, but, did he yeah. do that often? He would like bring over just a couple outfits and then he would yeah. pack them up. Exactly. And it's so like about how many outfits would he bring at a time? Do you think? It's, I'd say enough for a week. A week. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cause I was kind of confused by that. Cause like he had mentioned some other interviews that like, I can't figure out, did he live with you full, you and, in Sarah full time or just on the weekends to do the taxi? You no. Know, he he lived with us. He became like a child in a sense to us. Um we ended up paying for his phone bill and taking care of pretty much paying for his court fines and all this other bullshit. Um in a sense he was supposed to pay us back, which is another reason why I'm not fond of him because he Mm -hmm. owed, owed us so much money. I mean, he owes us thousands of dollars. Um, yeah. And that's our fault for helping him. But that's who Sarah and I are. We're people that help people. You yeah. know, that's that's what it was. We were just, you know, believe we, you know, believed in helping people. So, so go ahead, Ellie. 
Did he, did you guys wait there while he did the laundry at his mom's house? Like while you were doing the He, he just did, he just threw the clothes in the washer. Okay. And so then he packed the duffel bag full and bring it back, or did he just kind of drop the stuff off and his mom kind of took care of it for him and he just. His mom wasn't home. Oh, she wasn't? He wasn't, he was supposed to, he wasn't allowed to be in the house. Oh. He was supposed to be in the house, which is why Brandon had to go around the back, back part of the house. To get into the house because his mom had motion sensor, uh, like motion sensor doorbell that uh -huh. picked up action on any, any, and started recording. So, um, he, he would always have to go around the backs of the house so he didn't get recorded going to the house. Oh. Is that what he did that night? Yeah. Go to the back so he didn't get recorded going to the house mm -hmm. with a duffel bag. Mm hmm. Okay, I'm going to play devil's advocate because I'm looking at chat and we're here to hear your side of the story. And mm -hmm. and so we just need to clarify like a few things because I just want to help you out. You guys left. This is like around the time Monkey disappeared as far as the police timeline goes. Okay, you're mm -hmm. nodding. You realize that. And you guys, it's you and Brandon and Sarah and you're mm -hmm. going out with a duffel bag. Mm -hmm. Um, with a bunch of laundry driving far away to Brandon's mom's house where he's not supposed to be to allegedly do his laundry when he isn't even supposed to be there, but maybe that's why he's sneaking over there. Like I get it, like, I just want you to know what the chat, the chat's feeling a little. I already, I already, I already see where the chat's probably going. Okay. Yeah. Chat, so I'm just trying to help I already you, like, can see where they're directed. No. Right. And you clarify with everybody, I was a absolute 100% witness when Brandon put the clothes in his duffel bag. It was completely empty. There's not a single there's not a single item in it. I was in the house the whole time we all left through the garage together. There was nothing, there was no there was nothing inside that duffel bag besides clothes just so people are aware. Yeah. We we, we okay. walked through the garage. Thank you. Got in the truck. I threw the toe strap in the truck. Brandon got in the back seat behind me. Sarah was driving. I was in the passenger seat. We took off. Made it to Cuna. Brandon went in to go do his laundry. Took the duffel bag in. I get where you guys can kind of be like, oh, well, that's, you know, it's kind of weird. It, it, it wasn't weird to me, considering I, I literally watched him. Sure. So every, every move that he made. And can so I did you, the, Can I just ask where the duffel bag is now? Like, do police I have that? Did police me, confiscate that? No, I, I don't know. I think Brandon has it in North Dakota or wherever he is. I don't know. It was never. It was the duffel bag was never. I, I don't. I don't even think that detectives. I they might have it. I don't know. Yeah. Again, okay. I was in jail for eighteen months, so I don't know what they have. I don't know what they don't have. Okay, go ahead, Ellie. So I was. Did we lose Ellie? We can't hear you, Ellie. Oh, you're on mute now. Unmute yourself, Ellie. There you go. Talk now. Thank you. I'm having some some trouble with the button. Um, so I'm just curious. So did did you and and Sarah go into his mom's house with him when he like snuck in there? No, Sarah stayed in the truck. I had to push Brandon's car out of the driveway to back it out and to push it out into the street behind the truck so I can hook up the tow strap to it. Okay. So he just went in with the duffel bag, kind of dropped it put, off, threw put the, the laundry in the, in the washer. And Correct. then put the laundry in the washer, got some new clothes, came out with the duffel bag. Okay. And well, go ahead. No, go ahead. Well, I'm kind of I'm chopping up a little bit. So um so he got the duffel bag. He came back out. He's not mm -hmm. supposed to be at his mom's house. 
So he's not supposed to be at his mom's house because Brandon had a bunch. Brandon would bring friends over that his mom didn't approve of, mm-hmm. and um, you know, people would steal stuff from his mom and shit like that. So that's why. But um, she she eventually knew that he was in the house. You know what I mean? Um, mm-hmm. But. That's the only way Brandon could get in the house was going through the side of the house. And and he did that multiple times. Did he have a key or did he like go in through a window or no, the, he just went through the garage. Oh, okay. He went the, the, the garage, the, the the garage that goes out to the backyard. And did Sarah go in? No, Sarah stayed in the truck. Okay, because some didn't you earlier say she went in to pee? No. Oh, okay. Thank you. Sarah, I'm went pee on the side of, Sarah went pee on the side of the road when the toe strap broke, which we can cover. Oh, yeah. Let's cover that, too. Yeah. So, I'm just wondering, like, he doesn't seem very sneaky. <laughs> I'm just going to say, like, He's not. if he, like, s- like, avoided these cameras, he went in, and then he threw these clothes in the washing machine, but he didn't wait for, wait to, like, fully do the laundry. His, his mom, mom was in Arizona. Oh, so when did he go back to finish up the laundry? Sarah and Brandon went back the next day. Oh, my God. So went back the next day to go finish his laundry, and uh, they came back within a couple hours. <coughs> okay. Um we can go back. Ellie, did you have any questions about the house being in the house or anything? Cause I was going to maybe go to the brake fluid. Power steering. Yeah. Thing. I keep saying brake fluid. Let's get it right. Facts are important here. Thank you, Stacy, for keeping me on track because your facts are really important and power steering. So, mm-hmm. um, and I think Ellie's muted right now. So, okay. So, how long again were you at CUNA with Maybe the laundry in the half hour, but you never went in? No. And Sarah never went in to pee. She no. peed on the side of the road. So when did the peeing on the side of the road happen? After we, oh, she left us. No. She must be having a hard time. She's probably going to try to come back. Yeah. I know, um, right? We like Ellie. Ellie's great. <laughs> yeah. So after I got the vehicle hooked up, got all bloated, you know, everybody got, you know, Brandon was in the, his car behind the driver's side to, to steer it. <coughs> I'm in the truck with Sarah. Um, we took off and went to Idaho. We took 10 mile road to Idaho 16. Um, we t- now, mind you, when you tow a vehicle with a tow strap, you're never supposed to tow a vehicle on the interstate. Uh, specifically because that's, you know, for people that go, you know, 80 plus miles an hour, uh-huh. you know, so we took a back we took the back way to that, which was Idaho 16, um, which was the timestamps that I sent people okay. or sent, um, so Idaho 16, which is where we ended up pulling off, um, because Sarah went to go now now when you tow the vehicle you're supposed to keep a tight a tight you know um you're supposed to keep the, the toe strap tight. Well okay. we had come to a stoplight and then Sarah jumped the gun and gave the truck too much gas and, and jolted the, the truck or his car and snapped the toe strap. So we had to pull off to the side of the road. And oh, there she is. And um, we had, I had to get out, and Sarah was in the truck. Brandon was in his car. I got out, reattached the tow strap. I had to double knot it, which made this tow strap significantly shorter. And then um, Sarah got out for a quick second, walked around the truck on the side of the road, and used the bathroom, and then got back into the truck. That's where that came into the play. Okay. Why was Sarah driving the truck? 
uh, because she wanted to learn how to tow a, tow, a tow vehicle. And um, I honestly, it's hard being a bigger guy. It's hard for me to drive. Just, it's hard to explain. Like I, it's not, it's hard for me to drive longer distances. I'm a good short distance driver. But when it comes long distance, it's harder. During the day, it's a different story, but nighttime gets harder on me because, um, you know, it's it's just it's just it's hard to explain, you know. Does, but that's that's why she was driving because I didn't feel like driving, um, and Sarah honestly was comfortable driving, and I was okay with her driving, so that's why she was driving. Okay. And where was the duffel bag? You guys had it in like. The it was next sitting next to Brandon. Okay. In the back mm -hmm. of the truck. Like mm -hmm. was the truck. Well, no, Brandon was towing his car. So the duffel bag was in with, with Brandon's new clothes were in his car with him. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So, okay. Got it. Mm -hmm. Um, and you get back and then what do you do? So get back into the neighborhood. Um, we pull in, we first pull in off of uh, US 95 on 8th Street. We notice there's a bunch of people. And I told Sarah to stop. And um, we stopped and asked what was going on. And they said a little boy has disappeared. So we were like, that's really crazy. Like, you know, because we've never heard of that before in our neighborhood. You know what I mean? Like, this has never been a thing since we've lived in that neighborhood. Right. Um, yes, I added fluid before the trip, before we took off to Cuna. Um, I think with John, didn't you tell him, John, <coughs> correct me if I'm wrong, because I genuinely <coughs> remember this. <laughs> maybe it was before I thought it was after and John asked you devil's advocate why I could have this wrong um, Ellie is having a hard time unmuting so Ellie you tell me if you remember this part I know that Ellie's when did when did he say when did he explain to Dr. to John yesterday about the fluid Ellie do you remember Ellie's having a hard time with her mute button I learned I think I got it. Um, it just has a little bit of a delay on it. Um, I thought before pulled out of the neighborhood. That's what I told him. Yeah, exactly okay. what I just told you. Okay. It was before I pulled out of the neighborhood, before we left 8th Street. We pulled off on the right-hand side of Southwest 8th Street and before Arizona, where okay. that big hay field, alfalfa field, it is right there. It was like right. where he saw, like it was where like the other little boy was, like the mm -hmm. little boy. Yeah, Thank tell you. us about the yeah, tell us about the boy that you saw. He was just a a, a nothing um, unusual stood out. He was just a little boy or another boy. He wasn't little. He was definitely looked nothing like Michael. He was more uh, dark hair. Um, I, I don't know how to label other than he was a Mexican. He was he was a Mexican kid and um you know shorts and a t-shirt and but he was much he was much more filled in and defined. Like he was probably I had to guess you know between eight and ten years old, if I had to guess. I mean but look nothing in in relation to Michael or close to Michael. But that's that's what I saw that day, and he was just by himself hanging out on. Um, I assumed it was his his front yard, just playing, and, you know, being a kid. You know, I would have done the same thing, you know, when I was a kid, you know. Yeah, and why does that? Why does that child? What? Do, why does that child? Um, why do you remember him? Like, what is it about that child that kind of made you notice him? Nothing really. I mean, he was he was the only kid that was i mean really there was people walking on the sidewalk you know what i mean but there was that's just you asked if they people asked me if i saw anybody any kids or anything and i said yeah that's who i saw right but i don't so, know yeah. specifics i don't know like what his facial features would look like sure i didn't you sure. know not like i got that close but i can tell you what 
you know, his skin color and, you know, you know, yeah. what, you know, shorts and a t-shirt, but I mean, I can't tell you, you know, what he looks like, you know, verbatim. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. And for I those wondering, you, people are saying, go ahead, Ellie. Yeah. Is it, was he like really far away from you? Like, again, I've he never was been probably, he's probably <laughs> seven, maybe eight houses down on the right hand side. Okay. I mean, it was it's not like you could, you know, I mean, you could really depict his facial features, you know, like mm -hmm. as if like it was just like me and you on the camera, you know what I mean? Yeah. But I think we might have some unusual. someone here. I think we might have someone here that once interviewed you. If so, um, thank you for being here. I want to say um people point them out to me and I'll and if they have specific questions, I'll I'll ask. Anyway, go ahead. Thank you for everyone that's interviewed you. Your story mm -hmm. matters. Sorry, go ahead, Ellie. Who who's the one that interviewed me? I, I'm I'm learning. I I don't know which one. I know you've done you've done some. Who have you interviewed with Stacy? And then I might be able to. Uh, Dolly, um, Eve, Brooks, um, and Level Headed and um, Josh, Josh yeah, Labs. Okay. 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 Well, anyway, thank you everyone for that's okay. that's interviewed Stacy. Um, your story matters, Stacy. Sorry, go ahead, Ellie and or Stacy. I didn't mean to interrupt you. I'll, I'll be watching the chat for anyone that wants to ask anything. Mm -hmm. No, I was just trying to get a sense of um, like how far the house with the little boy was from where they stopped to put in the power steering fluid, and that was before you had the other car, right? You were just in the truck, but it was before the car what do you mean like you guys hadn't picked up the car yet oh correct yes correct okay that was before we even left the subdivision or the neighborhood so after you left the subdivision so you notice this boy he's outside by himself about seven or eight houses away yeah. Um, so you get back in the passenger seat mm -hmm. and then you guys drive off. Did anyone else, no did Sarah notice the boy? Did Brandon notice the boy? Did you guys like talk about it later? Like wondering? Well, was that I'm, the sure boy? They, I'm sure they noticed him, but it wasn't, again, it wasn't an un un unusual situation. I mean, kids play all the time. It was a neighborhood, you know what I mean? There's going to be kids. There yeah. was nothing unusual about it, you know? It was just a normal, everyday... Totally. Day. Totally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I hear you. I hear you. Um, so, so, so you guys get home. What do you guys do that night after you get home? Uh, I, I, Brandon and Sarah went out and looked for... Michael, I was unstrapping the car from the truck because you can't, I was taking up the whole length of the street pretty much and blocking blocking the road, and you can't do that per neighborhood. I guess you're not supposed to do that in, in the neighborhood, I guess, or the code. It's per code, but you can get a ticket for it. So I immediately got home. They went out and looked for... Um, Michael and um, I uh, unstrapped the car and then um, I went in the house Got after I got everything undone and <clears throat> I think if I remember it I passed out when I went to sleep you passed out and you yeah, said this Okay, and Sarah and Brandon went out looking for for Michael mm -hmm. because how why did they how did they know to go out looking for Michael? Because when we, well because when we pulled into the neighborhood, there was people everywhere, you know, and that's how we found out learned that a little boy went missing was from the people when we first pulled into the subdivision after we got back, or in the neighborhood on Eighth Street after we were towing his vehicle. Um, 
you know, we stopped and asked what was going on, and they said a little boy has gone missing. And so Sarah and Brandon decided they were going to go help them look for this little boy. Well, I went and got the vehicle un- unstrapped. Okay. And then you just kind of passed out after that? I was burnt. I was... I'm telling you, even being a big guy now, like, it takes a lot out of me to do, to have energy to do things. Um, so, and I was much bigger at that time. So, yeah, it was, uh, it was just, I mean, just my, and it was exhausting. I mean, it was like probably 1130 or so when I, when I went in the house and passed out. Uh-huh. But I just and Sarah came home and with Brandon and I asked if they seen or heard anything. They said no, and that was that was that night. Okay, so I just want so to clarify. I think this part's really interesting. It's when Michael went missing. This is your alibi. This is your alibi. Mm -hmm. You're with you're with Sarah, your wife, and Mm -hmm. your roommate Brandon. Brandon needs to do laundry. He's not allowed at his mom's home, but she's Mm -hmm. luckily out of town. And you guys are like, let's go. He packs a duffel bag. You guys head out to go to CUNA, mm-hmm. but then you pull over to do uh, fluid, put fluid in the car. Is that right? Before we before we left the neighborhood, keep in mind. Before, before we you left the neighborhood. So you pull out. Before we went to CUNA. Before you went to CUNA, you pull over. Before <laughs> you left the neighborhood. But, that's, but the monkey's mm-hmm. neighborhood is your neighborhood, right? It's about a half a mile no. away. That in our neighborhood is our subdivision. He lives in the other side. You literally have to, have to walk. He doesn't live in our neighborhood. That's true. Like, There's like a street dividing. There's a street dividing it. Two streets dividing it. Because you have to go on 8th Street. You have to cross 8th Street. And you have to go on Arizona, down Arizona, about probably an eighth of a mile. And then there's 9th Street. Totally makes sense. Okay, that makes sense. You're right, because I do remember now. It's been a while. Never been on, yeah, there never, was a street I've, dividing. And I've never, just so everybody knows on here, I have never been on Ninth Street a day in my life. I've, I've never even been on, uh, I don't even think I've been on Arizona. So yeah. I don't, I don't, Yeah. I just want to okay. clarify that and specify that to people. Like, I have never been on Ninth Street. So Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, th- yeah, your house is like about a half mile from yeah, correct. Uh, Michael's. Yeah, about a half mile. Um, so, so okay. So then, and then you get home, they go out looking for Michael because you had to have been kind of surprised when you pulled up and saw all the people. Like, what were you thinking when you saw it, everyone? It was, it was concerning, very concerning. You know, we didn't know what was going on at all. Like, We've never seen so much activity like that ever since we've lived there. Uh-huh. And, you know, that's, it was just shocking to us. Yeah. Yeah. So did you ask somebody, like, how did you? Yeah, we asked the police officer what was going on. Okay. Okay. So you, like, did you roll down the window in the truck or? Mm-hmm. Okay. And he told you and then, and then mm-hmm. they went out, you crashed because you were tired. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, and then Adrian was just gone. Adrian just was he gone. He never so. came back. He was gone for that night. Correct. Okay. Well, huh. What else would you like to know, Ellie? Anything else? Yeah, I'd like to circle back because I dropped off there for a minute. So I'd like to circle back if that's okay to back to the laundry thing. You guys might have wrapped that up, but I didn't see any of that. So Brandon broke into his mom's house. Like I've avoided the cameras. But, broke in, but and for, for started his laundry. But then yeah. right when I dropped off, you were saying that Brandon and Sarah went over the next day. Correct. To get his laundry and finish up. What time did they go over the next day to do that? Early morning. I think they probably would have left about nine. And what time do you think they got back? It was no later than noon. Okay. So nine to noon, and then they kind of came back. Nothing seemed amiss when they got back. Everything seemed Not good. At all. Absolutely. Okay. Nothing seemed off at all. That's what, that's what I'm trying to explain to people is nothing was off about that night. Other mm-hmm. than him just going, you know, him going missing. 
but yeah. it was just appalling to all of us. You know, it just it was sad. You know, yeah. I think it was probably the worst news that we've heard ever since we've lived there. Mm -hmm. Sarah was very, she sounds like she was very energetic. Like she was in the emergency room the night before for a diabetes issue. And then you guys were up and out of the next day, taking these taxi calls. She was mm -hmm. running Brandon and Adrian around. Then you guys dealt with the, the truck. Mm -hmm. And then her and Brandon went out to search for Michael. And they didn't get home till late. About 12, I think. 12 or 10. And and they left again by like 9 a.m. Mm -hmm. They don't like to sleep. Very, I mean, they don't like to relax. I guess it's a better way to put it. They were busy. Yeah. Um, this is a question, Crime Sleuth. And thank you for your super chats, everyone. Truly, they help. Um, <laughs> we kind of went over this, um, but she wants to know uh, how many inches the duffel bag was and if you could show with your hands, but your camera is really small too. I don't even know if your hands can. Fit yeah, they're not. The it's not going to show that. I can tell you. I, I've already went over this. I, there's no. I don't. Can't yeah. tell you inches how long it was. I'd say maybe the duffel bag in length was maybe three feet in length. Yeah. And in yeah. height, I mean, I don't even know how to go in height, but. There is no way you're putting a body in that bag. I can tell you that. And yeah. to answer the question about the bag coming in, I see the bag again. Yes. Brandon used it all the time. Hmm. Hey, by the way, people are mentioning about other creators going live tonight about this. If if you are, let me know. I'll I'll send people over anyone. I don't I don't um I don't know all of the channels, but I support all of the channels covering you know, Michael's case. So uh, feel free to share your channels and chat is what I'm sharing. And I'll try to pin them too, as we kind of conclude. Um, and if anybody wants that, I'm, I'm happy to do that. I, I want awareness for, for um, monkey. And if anybody is interested in seeing Stacy's other interviews, um, I haven't seen them, but um, well, I've seen, I think one, but I'd love to share. So I'd love to share. Um, so let me know if anybody wants me to share their channels where you're going to go live tonight about this or where you've interviewed Stacy so that everybody else can go see more. Um, uh, Stacy, you know, you've lasted a while. So, so then, so the next day Brandon goes back. Did you guys keep looking for, Michael, after that, I know that like you had him on your refrigerator, his mm -hmm. picture, and you put him as your profile photo. Were you helping to actively look when this child Correct. went missing? Okay. Okay. Um, and uh, how did you, how did you, how did you continue looking for him or helping? Did you guys go out searching or? Yep. What do you think? What did you think back then that happened to him? What, what, well, no, what do you think happened to, to, to Michael then? Wasn't you, um, what do you think happened? I, I don't know. I, I don't even know how to speculate. I think, um, I mean, I, th I think he was taken. I, I, I mean, I don't know what else to even, there's, there's no other, a kid doesn't just go missing. You know what I mean? Like, right. I mean, with, without having, um, I mean, I mean it, no, it doesn't make sense. Okay. Like, I, um, I, I just, I don't know what to think, you know, it's, it's sad. Mm -hmm. I saw in chat earlier they were wanting us to ask what Stacy's thoughts were on the neighbor, on his neighbor. Um, Do you have any thoughts on your neighbor? 
Do you know what they're talking about with Carson, that? Carson's a, Carson's a good dude. Uh, I yeah, I would Carson. never. I mean, he does have a sex offender sex offense, but it's never never ever been even a concern. Okay. Okay. Another, and crime, uh, crime sleuthing is letting us know that she did a detailed review and comparison of all of Stacy's interviews. If anyone's interested, um, again, this is to all creators here that have ever done anything with Michael and, and Stacy. Let me know. I'll pin them all. Everyone look at the pinned comments so I don't keep interrupting, but I would love to share everyone's channels that are, that are interviewing Stacy and have shared his stuff. Okay, go ahead. Sorry, Ellie. <laughs> So I also saw a, another question was floating up a lot. I'm just want to give Stacy an opportunity to clear the air on all of these kind of trending topics. I don't always know what they are, but I see, you know, if I see it happening multiple times, I think it's worth giving him an opportunity to address it. And one of them um, is says um, there's a picture of Adrian at Applebee's at 4:45. Do you know what that's about? Like it's saying it's time stamped at 4:45, and he was there with with um, Sarah and Brandon. Um, sorry, I was reading the comment. Um, I've, I've yeah, ignore I've, the I've comment. Heard, sorry, I've heard about the timestamp, but I don't it doesn't make sense because they were again home when I got home. Mm -hmm. So how long of a drive is it from the Applebee's to your house? Like, could that maybe have been when they were leaving or like how far of a drive is it to get from Applebee's to your house? 40 minutes. Well, it depends which, which city you go in. Uh huh. Well, did they, um, did they, to tell they go you to Boise? It's sixty about sixty-two miles. Uh huh. But if you go to Nampa, it's only like thirty-six. Okay. Did they happen to mention to you when they came back, like which one they ate at? I'm sorry. These comments are. <laughs> I'm, I got really yeah. Amazed. Just yeah. sorry, just, I'm sorry. Okay, I'll start. I'll stop pinning them. Um, I'm trying to share. So, guys, I'm going to stop pinning comments for a while, but keep sharing. I'll try to star them and share them later. Any channel that's supporting Monkey and his family. Okay. Um, did they happen to mention to you where they ate at, or did you happen to ask what they did all day? Uh, they just went to. I was under the impression they just went to Applebee's and. I went to Ross and uh -huh. I was, I don't really, other than that, like, I don't really question, you know, what Sarah, mm -hmm. they do, like, you know, they do their own thing. That's fine. Like, yeah. So <clears throat> that makes sense. You know, you guys were all friends, you're living together. You were all pretty close. Um, so also they're asking a lot about a fight with a between Adrian and Brandon that they had a falling out, like some sort of fist fight. They never like had a day fist fight. after they never had a fist fight. Okay. So did they have like some sort of altercation like the day after Brandon and Adrian were close. Like they got close as friends. Mm -hmm. There was never, even from the whole time I've known them, there was never known Brandon or when Adrian was staying with us. They've never fought or had an altercation or, or anything. Okay. Okay. Uh, but Adrian did, he, he, he didn't, Adrian didn't live with you as long as Brandon though, right? No, correct. About how long did he live with you? And he was the one that Sarah picked up on the um, mm -hmm. cab ride, right? Mm -hmm. So, the, there was Adrian who lived with you for about how long? He was there for a few months. A few months. And he moved out like the week. August. The same week that everything kind of started happening. Yeah. August. Mm, second, 
first, second week in August. Mm -hmm. And there was also Tanner that lived with you guys? Mm. Kind of, yeah. Is? Yeah, he, did, he was only with us for... He came after um, Adrian left. Okay. So they didn't stay at the same time. So he moved in like the beginning of August. No, Tanner. Yeah. Oh, Tanner came in like I think September, something like that. Oh, okay. And Brandon was still living there at that time. Mm hmm. So when did everyone? Were you guys all still living together? Like, whenever, like the police showed up and kind of how did that all work um yeah. sorry can you repeat the question so w tanner and brandon were still living with you yes correct at the time that so you got arrested first right no sarah got arrested first mm -hmm. sarah got arrested on april 13th 20 22 and that was our anniversary okay and that was for a narcotic charge no uh to, well she had a narcotic charge but it was for some <coughs> hydrocodones that she got from her dentist mm -hmm. and she had them in a bag because the bottle got water in it and mm -hmm. so she put them in a the bag with a uh, Ziploc bag with a paper towel in it, so it would soak up the moisture in the pills. Um, but she she had a prescription for him. That's why that charge got dropped. Okay. So what was she arrested for then? Uh, aggravated assault against Tanner and attempted concealment of evidence. Okay. Concealment or destruction of evidence. And the destruction of evidence at the time was related to Michael's disappearance? Mm -hmm. Correct. So what did they tell you as her spouse at the time? Because I'm sure you had questions like, why is she being arrested? What is this about? Yeah, they just said that he, um, or she was getting arrested because she tried to hide um, the pistol that she held Tanner at gunpoint with. Oh. Mm-hmm. Okay. So it wasn't related to Michael at that time. No, I said that. It wasn't. Oh, okay. Sorry. Oh my god. Um, I just wanna, you know, I think I think the main thing is, you know, when you came into play, let's let's circle back. Some people are asking us, by the way, asking us why Stacy told law enforcement um that somebody was buried in his backyard. And we've talked about that. That was actually one of the right Stacy. That was one of the first questions I asked you. Actually, we started off with the tough stuff. So for those that are asking that you can go back to the beginning of this, um, interview. Um, he gives his reasons and he refers to mental, um, illness and being feeling like he was interrogated by police and wanted them off his back. Mm -hmm. Um, here's my question for you before that came up, they were interviewing you. The, there was a reason police were interrogating you. Was there, did they, did they knock on um, your door and like say search warrant? Did they, Oh no, you, no, you were in, you were in jail during this time. Correct. Did they come get you in jail and say, we need to talk to you. Like, how did that, how did you know that all of a sudden you were being questioned in monkey's disappearance and why were you being questioned before I don't, I don't know why to be honest with you i still don't know why um but they started questioning me when i was in payette county jail it was when they first had an initial talk with me and that was in may 19th i believe it was 18th or 19th of 2022 right after i got arrested and then that's May 19th or 20th is when they took me to um, Meridian, took Sarah and I in different vehicles to Meridian. 
to get questioned by, bless you. Thanks. <laughs> to get questioned, and then that's when we did the polygraph test. But after I passed the polygraph test, they didn't come and tar- talk, start talking to me until November again. Um, and then there are a lot of people saying here, this is an important question. This is, this is a really important question. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been kind of like, do I ask, do I not? But I, I, I just appreciate your openness tonight because it kind of came up. Like you said to my husband, John last night, again, that's a, a live that we did for our Patreon only mem- YouTube members only. Mm-hmm. You said on that interview, um, that there's no way you could confirm that there's no way anyone would find any evidence of Michael in or around your property. Cause he'd never been there. There are some people in chat saying that, um, that there is evidence that he might've been in the yard or that dogs hit or that police have mentioned something. Can you, can you speak to this? Uh, the police said that they, they, the dogs, the cadaver dogs had hit around the property, but there was never, um, it was, it didn't make sense to me because I don't even know how it would even be possible. Um, like again, like I was not, and I would never have or want to be a part of anything like this. Um, and just to let people know, like, I, I'm not that person. Um, I, any word or wind or even a whiff of something of knowing about, you know, knowing that somebody might've done something or like anything like that, I would have been the first person to turn to law enforcement. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't even second thought, even if it's my wife wouldn't give a fuck. I would throw her into the bus quick. Like I wouldn't even hesitate. You know, so I just I want to point that out to people. Like I'm not, I'm not heartless. I have a very caring heart, and I, I, I long for this child to be found. I want him to come to his family, and he does not. His family does not deserve what happened to him. He does not deserve what happened to him. What happened and to him? I, I don't. His disappearance. Okay, that's yeah. what I'm referring to. Yeah. You know, I, I don't. I don't, I don't, I want, I want to know what happened to him. I want to know exactly what happened to him. I want to know the people that are uh, like, <laughs> I, I want to know, know the people that did it. Cause I know as sure as hell it wasn't me. Well, yeah. again, I passed my polygraph test. They don't tell you, you sit there and pass a polygraph test to lie to you about it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I haven't I haven't seen the polygraph, but yeah. Um anything else? I I feel good about where I stand right now. I, I, there are many many questions coming in chat. Just so you, some questions that I'm seeing you guys asking, we've already asked. Mm-hmm. Other questions um were asked last night. Um any any creators doing their effort to put together numerous interviews by, by Stacy. I just want to say thank you. I know Stacy's here talking publicly to many of us and, and the true crime community is incredible. I want to say that. I just, I guess I just want to say, um, you guys are incredible. Stacy, you're great for coming forward and sharing what you know, because I think we're with you. We, we, we want to know, what happened and we want to bring Michael home and we want Mm -hmm. to see anyone that might be responsible for this, um, charged. Seriously. Um, you know, um, so I see a lot of people saying, well, ask this, ask this, just so you guys know, like, this is, this is a conversation where we really just wanted to let, let, um, we just really want to let Stacy talk tonight. So I know that a lot of you are like, ask this, ask this, push on this, push on that. I told, I told, um, I told Stacy before we started, like, look, we'll ask you questions, but we just want to hear you. I want to listen to you. So, um, 
we really wanted to nail down the timeline. I, I still have some questions with the timeline. I'll be honest, but I just thank you to all the creators that helped put the timeline together. There are a lot of creators here saying that they're going to put some timelines together. If you do that, reach out to hidden true crime info at gmail.com. This is, and here's, this is here's the, taking the village, you know, and, and here's what I'm willing to do too. If you want to do another live tomorrow, I can send you the time frames, the timestamps that I have. I mean, there's only a couple of them, but I can send you those timestamps and we can do another live tomorrow if you want. Yeah. Some of the time since we actually do something called a hidden hour every, um, we usually do it every Saturday night, but we skip tonight. Um, so we're doing it tomorrow. So we're not available tomorrow. Sunday night, we're going to be live. We're either covering gypsy Rose or John might discuss Michael's case either, or we'll, we'll just, okay. you know, we're still figuring it out. In fact, why don't you guys share in comments, um, what you might want? Cause John, John did interview Stacy yesterday and, um, you know, he could share some thoughts, but I don't know if he'll have time to watch this full live before tomorrow, but um, let us know. Yeah. What you want. So, so, uh, but if you want to send me those, I can make them public Stacy, whatever the case may be, but um, I'm going to let Ellie, Ellie, do you have any more really kind of important questions to ask, you know, just to, to, to kind of share anything else that's kind of pressing I think, I think Ellie's, oh, there she is. She has the. No, I don't think so. I think, um, I think I was just trying to get a better understanding of all of the people and kind of what the area was like and, and the time. And I think uh, Stacy did his best to fill in some of those gaps and some of those questions. Um, but I just wanted to check with Stacy and make sure that he didn't have anything that he felt like needed to be discussed that had not been discussed in this video, even if it's something that maybe he discussed in the other, mm -hmm. um, but he hadn't said here on this um, platform. Yeah, no, I'm good. Um, you know, any questions you guys have, please refer back to some of the other videos that I've been doing. You know, I'm, I'm just here to get, get my side of the story out because I, I want justice for this little boy. I want him to come home. I want peace for the family, just like everybody else does. His family doesn't deserve to suffer. And there, I go on a nightly basis going in tears. I cry every night before I go to sleep because I want this little boy to be found. It's sad. And I, 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 I feel immense pain. I can't even fathom what his parents are going through with that little boy. Yeah, I can't either. Uh, thank you, Laugh a Day. We want the whole truth. We want Michael home. Love to Brandy and Tyler and their whole family. Mm -hmm. Couldn't say more. Um, again, um, I want to say that Monk, uh, Michael's disappearance and, and the mystery of this case is, I think, a case that the true crime community is where you see a lot of creators come mm -hmm. together and it takes a village. And I just want to, again, give a shout out to all the creators here tonight. I pinned some of you. I couldn't pin all of you because it was kind of confusing. Um, Stacy, a little bit, who's getting distracted. And I know he's tired. But um, I just want to thank you all for being here and all the work you're doing. A lot of you put together timelines of his different things he's said or, or understanding what he said so that we can all understand more and and help in this case. And I actually feel like this is a case where the true crime community can do a lot of good. So I just want to thank all the creators that are here. I saw a lot of new, new word names here tonight. Um, so thank you. And like I said, feel free creators to reach out to me, um, at, um, hidden true crime info at gmail.com. If we can help share some things. And then, um, I also just want to say thank you to those who have given this video a thumbs up and have um, appreciated it, meaning you value what we're trying to do here. And thank you to Stacy for trusting all of us, every type of person. And I do want to make it clear that um, law enforcement has stated that uh, there has been talk of, of Michael's family. Law enforcement has never called them a suspect, and they, they don't think that Michael's family has anything to do 
with this or his disappearance. So mm -hmm. we need to get to the bottom of what happened to sweet monkey and, and bring him home. So um, we have a full playlist. We have a full playlist on our channel. I even have an interview with Brandy as well. We interviewed her back in the day. I have the presser that people were mentioning. I shared that at the beginning of this channel and we have a full missing Michael monkey Vaughn playlist. You can watch all of that. So, um, yeah, thank you community. I guess I just can't emphasize that a month as enough. Stacy, any last words you want to say anything else? You're a caring person. You, you cry every night while you go to bed, hoping that Michael comes home. Anything else? I just want to say thank you to everybody that is watching. And, you know, I know this is not going to clear me by law enforcement, but this at least shows you guys, you know, that I, that I'm, I just, everybody has their side of the story you know, to tell. And that's why I'm, I'm telling my side because I want people to hear it from me. I just want to thank everybody that's watching and, you know, I just hope you guys all have a good night and, um, you know, maybe we'll do this again in a couple of days. Who knows? Yeah, maybe. All right. Okay. We'll see ya. Have a great night, Stacy. Hey, you too. Do you want me to message you? Um, yeah, if you want to, uh, if you want to send me those timelines, that would be awesome. I really appreciate that. Yeah, I can do that.